Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome to my online teaching channel. You are with Dr. Wan Faizia Wan Abdul Rahman, pathologist from University Science Malaysia. I'll be giving you a short lecture just to emphasize on the important features to differentiate between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis of inflammatory bowel disease, which mainly focus on gross and microscopic features. This picture is the most important to summarize the different pathology and morphology between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. We can classify the difference into location and extension of the disease. Crohn's disease located at any portion of GI tract from esophagus to anus, but the most common is at the ileocecum, while ulcerative colitis occurs limited to the colon areas preferably at the rectum and started upward. That's why its name is ulcerative colitis. For the extension of the disease, Crohn's disease is skip lesion, which is multiple areas involved the segmental distribution with sharp demarcation between normal and abnormal areas. While ulcerative colitis is a continuous disease that starting at the rectum area. The Crohn disease is transmural disease that tend to develop deep ulceration and fissures and causing a cobblestone appearance of mucosa. While in ulcerative colitis, it is superficial disease with the formation of the pseudopolyps. This bowel segment shows a sharp demarcation between affected and unaffected bowel. The bowel of the affected area does not continuous, but it shows segmental distribution of lesion. This is what we call skid lesion. The affected areas show loss of normal mucosa with ulcer surface and areas of narrow lumen that we call it strictures. These gross features will give us clue towards the diagnosis of Crohn's disease. This bowel segment obviously show abnormality that we call it strictures, which refer to the narrow part of the bowel. From the left, we can see the narrowing of the lumen begin, areas of perforation and thickening of the bowel wall. All this happened because of transmural inflammation that leads to fissure formation between the mucosa fold, then causing the perforation and fistula tract formation, which induced the chronic inflammation causing fibrosis, muscle hypertrophy, wall thickening, subsequently lead to narrowing and stretches in Crohn's disease. This is another example of stretcher formation from fresh resected bowel specimen. You can easily appreciate the narrow lumen here, but what I want to emphasize, the creeping fat that accumulate at the outer part of the, of the stretcher area. Why this has happened? This indicating that the extensive transmural had happened that causing the mesenteric fat wrapping around the serosa surface that led to the formation of the creeping fat. This is what happened in Crohn's disease. This colonoscopy image shows an abnormal findings in bowel mucosa. The mucosa is irregular with presence of deep ulcer and fissure in between the raised mucosa. These findings can be seen in the entire segment of the lesion. This is known as cobblestone appearance. This appearance is resulting from the healing deep longitudinal ulcers that alternate with the uninvolved or non-ulcerated mucosa. For those who cannot imagine what is cobblestone, it is a rounded stone which previously been used as a pavement roots. So, whenever you have this appearance, you might think of Crohn's disease. This fresh colectomy specimen shows an involvement of the whole areas from here to this side and to this side. It appears reddish, inflamed, granular, hemorrhage with multiple ulcers. These features consistent with ulcerative colitis.
Their morphology depends on the extension of the disease, the initial stage characterized by hyperomid, granular, mucosa, and hemorrhage, but later stage shows much friable mucosa with pseudopolyps formation. This is an example of how pseudopolyps looks like. It usually small and multiple, but sometimes can be large. This bowel mucosa is obviously abnormal, showing multiple finger-shaped mucosa, the alternatin with irregular mucosal ulcers and mucosal bridges that causing the formation of pseudopolyps in ulcerative colitis. Therefore, pseudopolyps are due to the irregular mucosa ulcers that undermining the mucosa, alternating with finger shape and involve mucosa. We move on to the microscopic pathological features. This panoramic view shows one segment of bowel that composed of their mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer, and serosa layer. As what you can see here, there is transmural involvement of inflammation. Looking at the superficial mucosa, there is an area without epithelium, which is indicating of ulceration. Not only at the superficial, but it deep extending downward. The last features appreciated here is the multiple granulomas formation. With this diagnostic hallmark features, we can call this a Crohn disease. The section on your left shows a transmural inflammation of bowel wall, characterized by ulcer formation, lymphocyte infiltration at the entire wall with multiple granuloma formation. At the same time, within the mucosa, there is acute inflammatory cells, which is neutrophils infiltrating within the mucosa and also accumulate within the crib that we call it crib abscess. This is also features of Crohn disease. From this section, look at the crib first. The arrangement is haphazard with irregular and distorted crib. This crib distortion is a feature of chronic inflammatory bowel disease for both Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis. But there is another feature present here, an epithelial granuloma. The granuloma is a collection of the epithelial cells that can be seen at any layer. It different from TB granuloma because it is non-caseating granuloma. Presence of granuloma is a diagnostic hallmark for the Crohn disease. However, please remember absence of it does not exclude the Crohn disease. This panoramic view from the section of the bowel segment. When we examine the muscular layer of the bowel from the left to the right, we found that the muscle is intact, no transmural inflammation seen. But what we can appreciate from this photograph is multiple mucosal ulceration, the areas without mucosa, the alternate with the mucosa that forming the polypoid like structures, meaning that the inflammation confined to the mucosa and submucosa with the presence of pseudopolyps. Therefore, this is a feature of ulcerative colitis. Finally, this photomicrograph shows an inflamed mucosa with multiple cribs. Just look at the cribs carefully. This is not normal crib. It has abnormal shape and haphazard arrangement. In some cribs, it shows branching, some misshapen or distorted, and this crib changes indicating of chronicity features in inflammatory bowel disease for both Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis. All these features happen due to 
due to the repeated cycles of creep destruction, regenerative and healing process. The same thing with the creep abscess, which is accumulation of neutrophils within the creep lumen, or cryptitis, infiltration of neutrophils within the creep epithelium. It can happen in both Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis. This table is very important to summarize all the points. When you understand the disease process, no more memorizing the points. Instead, you now be able to explain every single point written here. For example, when talking about the gross or macroscopic features, you know the bowel region involved and the distribution. Now you know why the stricture and the wall thickness present in Crohn disease not in ulcerative colitis, which is related to transmural involvement. For microscopy, the transmural and deep ulcer in Crohn disease result in the fibrosis, serocytis, and fistula formation in Crohn disease. In ulcerative colitis, the special about ulcerative colitis is the formation of the Pseudopolyps. As for clinical manifestation, you know that clinical features are similar, which is diarrhea, abdominal cramp, and discomfort, also fever, low grade fever. The fistula common in Crohn disease because it is transmural. The malabsorption also in Crohn disease because it mainly involves the small intestine. But malignant potential are higher risk in ulcerative colitis because mainly it is colony involvement. For toxic megacolon, common in ulcerative colitis because the inflammation more severe in ulcerative colitis that associated with inflammatory mediators respond which able to cause paral paralysis of colony smooth muscles that lead to colonic dilatation with risk of bowel perforation. That's all from me. Remember guys, work hard in silence. Let your success be your noise. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye. Assalamualaikum.